Okay, so in the last one, we created a view function, we set up a URL to map to that view function, and now, and then we got this error of template does not exist. So before we actually import the templates, we actually need to look at some more stuff inside of our Django project. So I'm gonna go over some basic terminology here now, and we're gonna see what everything is. Now, this top folder here, source, that is the project folder, right? So the project folder itself holds a few things. So if we collapse things down, so we can see all the different things that it holds. It holds an app, it holds what's called a configuration folder, it holds the database files, and it holds manage.py. So this is where all of our app, or excuse me, our project stuff is going to exist. And the reason for this is it keeps it, everything nice and clean and in one place where we can use it at any time and also understand how everything's organized so us or other Django developers can look at our project and be able to figure everything out relatively quickly on how to make changes or update it or even you figuring out what other people are doing and how you can update their stuff as well. So this Try Django 18, if you remember back, that's the name of our project itself. This is the main configuration folder. And the configuration folder has settings.py in it. It has urls.py in it, wsgi, and of course in it, um, the init full file. So these things, we the main ones here, we have to worry about are settings and URLs. We've already talked about URLs, we've already seen URLs, and we've already worked with URLs quite a bit. In this one, we're gonna talk about settings. So let's go ahead and open up the settings file. Um, and what we see here is we have Django settings for the Try Django 18 project, right? Generated by this command. And it shows us essentially what this file is all about. Um, so if we go through line by line, let's just talk about what's going on here. Import OS, this is a Python um, specific function that allows us to work with regardless of whatever operating system we're working with. It allows us to use the files within this project and base dir, so base directory of the project is where manage.py is. This is the root of the project, right? So that's what the base directory is, and it's using this function to reference the base or the where that file is located um, on any operating system, because the file structure between uh, Mac and Linux and Windows is different based on whichever one you're using. Uh, it's just slightly different, and Django needs to be operating system um, independent, so it works no matter what operating system is, as long as Python's installed, um, that's kind of why it looks like this and that's why it's using that. Uh, so that's one thing. Uh, we've got a secret key that's developed and it says keep it secret in production. Uh, this is a security thing and you can obviously read a lot more about this uh, on the Django documentation and I do refer recommend that you do. Uh, debug, so debugging as in debugging the system. Uh, you don't want debug on when you're in production because of security things as well. Allowed host, that's production stuff, but basically like, you know, yourdomain.com or like codingforentrepreneurs.com or whatever. Installed apps. We've talked about apps quite a bit already. Um, so this is where you would put installed apps. Notice our newsletter app is not there because we don't have it installed. Middleware classes. Um, middleware, we can just briefly discuss about it here real quick. Middleware means between a request and a response, right? So we talked about going to a URL of any kind, and when I hit enter, we see the request happening, right? So when I hit enter, it requests it, and then we get a response back. Um, so what middleware does is it's in between either one of those things, and that's essentially what's happening here. So it's code in between. As a beginner, you're not gonna really touch this a whole lot. Once you get a, a little bit more advanced, then you'll start to actually touch that and work with it. And now if we scroll down a little bit more, we have our root URL conf or root URL configuration. So how Django knows what URLs file to work with is from here, right? So this is the settings file. This is saying where it needs to go. And that's right here. And then we've got templates. So this is our template related stuff. This is a new version for the in, in 1.8, Django 1.8. Um, this is it's a little bit different than what's been seen in the past. So just keep that in mind um, But it is something that we can work with quite a bit and then we've got our WSGI application So essentially what is our Django application? This is where that's coming from which is also in that main 
uh, co configuration folder, WSGI, that's where that's going. You won't really need to change this here. You might need to do some stuff to it when you bring it to a production server, but at this point you don't. Uh, now we've got our database settings. So database, we've been using SQLite 3. There's plenty of other databases that you can actually work with here. So I definitely recommend that you can check out the code as far as the database is concerned. Uh, the popular ones that are, are offer support are MySQL, uh, MySQL and Postgres SQL. Uh, those two are very popular and ones that you might consider using as well. SQLite 3 is pretty good, but it's not going to be uh, ideal for a system that might really explode and do super well. Uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, you want a more robust database when, when you're talking about millions of, of data points. Um, and then we've got interna internationalization, so the language and the time zone and all this stuff. Uh, these are things that we're not really going to get into um, in this project, but uh, it's something that's worth checking out, especially if you're not in the United States. You can see how you can change the language code and the time zone. Um, this is pretty standard formats for time zone and language code, so you can also look those up even on Wikipedia. Those will show it too. Now, static files. Static files is a whole different topic, right? It's definitely something that's not related directly to Django. As you'll see, we see CSS, JavaScript, and images. These things do not always work with the database. JavaScript might. In some cases, it does. In some cases, it doesn't. But these things don't really change, right? They don't actually integrate with a whole lot of stuff. So what you can do is actually not have them in the Django project itself. They can be in a whole variety of other places. And that's something to think about too. So that means that another server can actually have the static files showing. And we will show you how to actually do it in on development. Uh, so you can see these static files working. But as far as how your CSS or images are going to come through on your site, it's going to vary based on how you configure it, which is where you will actually configure it here in settings.py. Uh, so that's a much bigger topic on a more broad scale. OK, cool. So now we've talked about the configuration for Django 18 um, or Django in general. This settings file does change slightly on the versions. Um, it's actually getting smaller and smaller, but there's a lot of customization and configuration that we can do to this settings file. So if you want to see everything that you can do and also what everything specifically means instead of a general overview, of course, definitely go ahead and take a look at the djangoproject.com and you can take a look and see the settings stuff in there because there's definitely a lot more to all these things than I just said. Um, and also the big change with the templates, this is something else that you might want to check out at some point. So now we see this templates and then we saw template does not exist. Now these things are hopefully starting to come together as to why we even talked about this settings file in the first place um, or at this point. Because um, what we're doing is we're actually going through this project and going through the different parts that we need as we need them. I think that's the best way to work in general. You do stuff to learn what you need when you need them versus trying to learn everything to learn everything, right? You want to learn it as you need it. In this case, we need to know how to set up our templates and how we might want to change them. So that is actually something we'll do in the next one. If you have any questions at this point, let us know. Otherwise, let's keep going.